Well, I don't have much, but uh, I'd just like to be thankful for the Lord tonight, for all he's done for me and my family. And it's a blessing just to be in the house of worship tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Give it to Brother Johnny right there in front of you. Where do we start? Family, friends. But I've really been thinking today about what I was going to say. And, uh, Brother Gio, we there's no doubt we have problems in the United States right now. But there's not another country that I would rather live in. That's right. That's right. We're not facing problems like a lot of these other countries are facing. Uh, Brother Billy, I'm, I'm free to get up and go hunting in the morning if I want to. Uh, some people don't have that privilege. They, they can't do anything without the government's uh, okay and, and can't go to church. And, and we, we can't even imagine not being able to go to church. We get to go to church every time the doors are open if, if we want to. And uh, so I, I'm so thankful uh, for where I live and uh, for my family, my church family. And all that the Lord's done for me, because he sure has done a lot. I, I can't even begin to to mention all of it, but uh, he knows, and uh, some of y'all know a lot of things too, but I, I'm very appreciative of where I live and where the Lord has brought me from. Amen. Now don't be bashful about raising your hand. I'm thankful tonight. I am, like Brother Johnny said, I'm thankful for my family, and I'm thankful for the friends that I have. I'm thankful for this church. I'm ex extremely thankful for my grandson that I'm going to have next, next month. Just super excited. But the one thing that stood out to me um, as I spent this whole day was my last evening. We carried a couple of boxes to some people for Thanksgiving dinner. And the first one, we found her house. It went real smooth. And the second one, I thought that this address was fake. We couldn't find it. I spent an hour, me and Sister Rita, trying to find this lady's house. I didn't think she existed. And <laughs> after calling Stacy and getting Sister Amanda and the cops and the bus drivers and everybody involved, I told Rita, I said, I'm just ready to go home. I, I done spent an hour and a half over here. I'm just ready to go home. And about that time, that cop said, I found the house. And so we went over there, and I walked up, and the woman heard me through the door as I told Rita. I said, I don't think they're awake. I think they're in bed. But I went ahead and knocked, and she came to the door, and it was this lady. And with tears in her eyes, she said, how did you find me? How, how did you get my name? And I said, well, our church does this every year. You know, it's, I, don't, I can't say exactly where your name come from, but it was given to us, and we just wanted to make sure that you and your family had a dinner. And she said, you know, I'd just about given up. I just about wanted to leave. My neighbors won't talk to me. I walk the streets on Sundays looking for a church. And I just want to be somewhere where I'm, I'm welcomed and that they want me there and my heart broke, and I thought, I told her, I said, well, we'd love to have you. <laughs> we'd love to have you at my church. And she said, well, I don't believe in the oneness. I believe in the Trinity. And I said, okay. And she said, I don't have long hair. My hair's really short. I got migraines, so I keep it cut. I said, okay. <laughs> and she looked down at her pants and did like this. I said, okay. I said, and I'm going to tell you just what our pastor said to tell you. Just don't come naked. <laughs> You come just as you are because that's just the way God wants you. And then anything that he wants changed in you, he'll do that. I said, but I'm going to be honest with you. My pastor teaches there's one God. He teaches from that Bible and he teaches the truth. And she started crying again. And, and I said, if you want, I'll come over and get you Sunday. And she said, okay. And she said, I'd come tomorrow night, but my family's supposed to be here. I said, it's okay. She said, I'm so glad y'all come by here. And it just, it broke my heart to think when she said, you know, I was ready to give up. I'm so glad that I was raised knowing who God is and that I knew in my darkest moments when I wanted to give up, I could call on him. I'm so thankful that he never left me. And I'm yeah. thankful that he used me in a way last night that maybe this lady will know she is loved. That's right. I want to thank 
God, family, friends, especially friends like Carol Henry. Uh, but I had something else that I've been thinking all day about what I'd be thankful for. And, you know, about two and a half years ago, I was in a job that I absolutely could not stand. I mean, Brother G.L. knows a little bit about the history of it. Some of you others do too. It just was something I was just mentally just about to go, and I prayed to the Lord. And I thought I got me one job. They told me I had the job, and then they sold out the business before they even negotiated my salary, and I missed that job, and I just was all down and depressed. But the Lord had something a little higher for me, Brother David. All my life, I loved farming, Brother Pete, and he just figured out a way to get me into the farming occupation, and Brother David knows this. There's been about five people started up spraying businesses. I'm the last one standing. That's because the Lord was in it. He wanted me in that business, and it just seemed like everything has just went super smooth with that business and all that, and I want to thank the Lord tonight for peace of mind and a good job. I want to thank the Lord for being patient with me. For over 60 years, I refused to accept the truth. But when I came to see the truth and figured out that it was the truth, my whole life has changed. I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm more at peace with myself. And I'm thankful for this, this church family. I'm thankful that when I came here, actually the first time I came here, I... Uh, I felt something in this, in this sanctuary that I had never felt before. And I made up my mind at that time that I didn't know exactly what it was the people here had, but I wanted it. That's right. And the Lord was patient enough with me to let me come to terms with it on my own with his prodding, of course. I'm thankful that he has shown me that, that he is bigger than any problem I have, have ever had. He's bigger than my dreams. And I know that there is nothing that is beyond him. I'm thankful that he, he cured me from cancer. He, um, he has just, and that was before I actually knew who he was. But he was preparing me at that time. And I'm thankful that he waited for me. I'm thankful. Brother, you've been worth the whole trip. I can now thank you for it. Brother G.L., I want to tell him about you can't out give God. Did you tell him about the time? That, oh, I've got I've got two things I'd really like to tell about. If I can stand up for that long. We had a visiting minister in the church, and he preached on giving. And he had a treasure chest up there. And he preached and he preached and he threw change out on the floor and everything. I mean, he was he was really laying it on everybody, giving. And the Lord told me to go up there in front of about eight or nine hundred people, doctors, lawyers, and all this stuff, you know. And I said, Lord, you don't want me to do that in front of all these people, you know. And he just kept on and kept on. And I had to walk up there while he was still standing down front here preaching and tuck my billfold and put everything I had in the bill. I don't know how much it was. I, I said, I put it in there, and I come back. Well, when they got through taking up, everybody started following me. They took over $70,000 up that night. You don't know how it makes you feel when you know that you was in the will of the Lord. The next thing that happened, 
<laughs> it's kind of, kind of funny. I built me a little boat, crappie boat. I gave $600 for the boat, didn't have a trailer. So I started getting stuff from junk piles and got me a trailer built. Bought some, even Brother Pete gave me the tires to go on it. <laughs> and I was sitting there in church one night, we had another business, business minister. Now we're talking about a, 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 what I call rich people sitting around. You think they are. And the Lord told I, I, what happened? I seen my boat up in front of that, up in front of that. Now this is crazy. And I, I, it got crazier. And he just, I just seen my boat up there and people put money in my boat. Put money in my boat. Well, anyhow, after it was all over, Brother John was up and I said, Lord, if you want me to do this thing, you have Brother John to turn around and come right back here where I'm at. And the very instant I got through with it, here he comes, sit down right beside me, my right chair right behind me. And I didn't even want to tell him about it. It was so crazy. I said, Brother John, the Lord told me to do something. And I just, I just, I just really told me. He said, well, he said, I think maybe he might have. Him. And I told him what, what had happened. He said, well, he said, that was my sermon for tomorrow night was about your boat and stuff. And I told him, he said, I, he said well, I said, I just want to give it to you. Give you the boat. They can have the boat. I want, I'm giving it to the Lord. And you sell it when you get through and take the money. He said, what do you think it might be worth? I said, well, at least maybe $1,200, you know. We brought the boat up there the next day and put it on the offering. And he never did tell me how much money. He said, we got a fine offering out of it. And he called me the next day. He said, no. He said, I want you to come get this boat. He said, two men came up here and gave me $1,200 and said, give him his boat back. And that's how you yeah, I'd give the Lord. <laughs> I love and appreciate him. I guess George is talking tonight, but I have testified all the way home almost today. We had a wonderful weekend this past weekend. Our church honored the elders, 55 and over. At 65 and over, we got a great big basket full of fruit, but he honored every person in that church that was 55 and older. That's what they do one time a year, Brother GL, every year they do that. You don't know how it makes us feel because we're sitting back on the seat and ever we we've done our doings. You know we've got younger ones coming on that are are doing what we used to do when we were young and enjoyed it and thoroughly enjoyed it. Believe me. But I, we were on our way home and I had my hand up like this and he looked at me. He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm praising the Lord. I'm testifying." And that's exactly how I feel. Our pa he, the preacher this past weekend preached about the cow. You know, it's got three stomachs, and he chews this. He called it the cud. We call it the cud, but he said the cud. And uh, But it's thinking back of all the things from years ago that you can bring up, bring up and bring up, and they still bring a blessing to this day. Regardless if they happened 50 years ago, they can still bring a blessing today. I'm so thankful for God. I'm thankful for the trip down, and I love everybody here. And it's such a blessing to see everybody and to feel the presence of the Lord. That's the main thing. I felt the presence of the Lord. i got to shut up. We may live in Georgia, but this is home. It's hard for me tonight. I feel so full. I feel the Lord here so strong. And I wasn't going to, I didn't get a testimony for tonight, but I got one sitting here on my seat. The Lord wants me to testify. You know, I'm so, I'm talking from my heart tonight. The Lord is so good to me. And you know, he loved me. Even before I knew him, because he died on the cross. He went to that cross and died for, my, for me and for you. And I'm thankful for that tonight. And he never, he never stopped loving me when I didn't even love him. Or, or I didn't serve him. I was out in the world. But I know lots of times he was with me in different situations. But you know... 
when he gave me that precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, he changed my life completely. He changed my life. And Brother Jill, yes, it is just a beginning. It's a beginning. Because it's been a long old road and there's been lots of things in this road. But it's, it's, it's a, been a good road, too. It's wonderful. I'm thankful for my family and uh, lots of things. I'm thankful for God because he gave me my life back. I thank, I thank him tonight for the chastising that he's given me because he don't, if he loves you, he's going to have to chastise you sometimes. And I'm thankful for that. But Brother Gerald, you taught me that. You told me that. When I was going through some hard times, he said, well, see, he only chastises them that he loves. So I have learned that through my sickness, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to always talk about sickness because I've had some very good times with the Lord. I spend every day. It's not a three day day thing for me. Church, I need church more than three days a week. I do. I have to have him every day in my life. He's my he's my counselor. He's my prince of peace. He's everything to me. And I'm telling it from the, my heart. He's my everything. And I could never praise him and love him enough for what he's done for me. And he walked with me three and a half months and showed me what love is. And I love him. And I never want to fail him. I always want to do his will and do what he told us that we need to do. He gave us a job when he gave us the Holy Ghost. That's to win souls. And that's my desire tonight. I'm thankful for a whole lot of things. Um, I got a house this year. I'm thankful for that. I didn't have to buy a piece of furniture because I got all of it for free. (laughs) Uh, I'm thankful for um, more than material things. I'm thankful for my family. And um, I'm glad I get to eat lunch at my nana's house every day. And uh, my mom and my dad. And I'm thankful for Richard. And there's just a bunch of stuff. And I'm glad I get to be a Sunday school teacher because that's what I've always wanted to do. And uh, it's kind of funny, this thanks, Thanksgiving service, because I called Dodd and my mom today because um, I get an email. when I pay one bill every month, the same amount. It's, it's changed one time. It went up a dollar, so it's the same amount. And um, I've paid it for over a year. It's never changed. I do it every month. And um, right before it's due, it'll send me an email and tell me it's time to pay it. And um, I got my email today, and it'll tell me my balance, but then I'm able to get online to pay the bill. So, I, I mean, I look every time to make sure it's the same amount because it don't change. There's nothing to change. And uh, it said, uh, Mount Dew, zero dollars. So I got online to see why that it said that. And this, you pull, I pulled my statement up, and it said, um, last payment amount, $96.49. Last payment received, $96.49. It said ninety six forty nine minus ninety six forty nine 49 equals a credit of $31.81. And I, it said I overpaid, but I didn't, I, but I know who did. And I just want to thank God for the little things sometimes, even though it don't seem like much. It's just, I think he just does it to crack a little joke and say, oh, I showed you. But I'm thankful for a lot of things. I'm thankful for my church. And um, I'm thankful that um, I'm able to be a part of it. I don't have to sit on the piece to do nothing. And... Um, I'm thankful for the liberty. I can come to church. You know, I have to worry about people not letting me come to church. Uh, I'm thankful that I do know the truth, and I could never thank you enough. I've got many, many things to be thankful for in my life. I know I'm only 25 years old, but I've had two experiences so far where I could not be here today. Uh, I've had an incident similar to Brother Billy's where I was out fishing. Did not end up well. And also, a few months ago, if you guys remember the Santee oil fire that happened in Soxton, I was inside that building. And uh, I want to give thanks to that because I know that I'm here because God wanted me to be here. Because I know that he has a job for me to do in his kingdom. And I don't know what the job is yet. Don't need to know. I just know that Whatever it is, I'm going to accept it, and I'm going to go at it as hard as I can, do the best job that I can at it, 
because I know that he's going to keep blessing me. I have too many blessings from God in my life to let him down. And I just, I don't know how to do anything else, but just hope and pray that he reveals to me what he wants me to do so I can get going at it. <laughs> another another thing that that I'm really thankful for is my best friend and my wife. And she really is my best friend. And Stacy and Shannon didn't have to give her to me, but they did. <laughs> and I don't know, I've probably taken up too much time, but something else is just this church. I mean, from the first time that I stepped in here, I just felt welcomed. And I've heard some stories about how her family can be, but they're really not that bad once you get to know them. <laughs> but, I mean, getting to come here, I mean, just the privilege of having a key to this place where I can just come in here anytime I want to. I can go up there. I can play my instrument for the Lord. I can come in here. I can pray anytime I want to. You know, I, I think of Brother Gio as a friend. You know, we've, we've been out a couple times together, you know, taking a trip here and there. And that's just something to be thankful for because not everybody has that. And I, I'm really glad that, you know, I, I feel like that I have a place here. And and I, I don't want to do anything to lose that or give that up. So I just want to give all thanks to God and hope he keeps blessing me. I'm thankful for my family, for my church family, and for my friends. I'm thankful for the opportunity to go to college. I'm thankful for my pastor, even though he makes fun of me, <laughs> and Sister Amanda, even though she sits in the front row and she blushes the whole time, no matter what he says, and I'm thankful for my mom still being here and coming back to church. Uh, this, this time uh, last year, there, there was a lot of things going on, and just, just a lot of confusion, and I'm just so thankful to to still be here and to still have the same desire to live for the Lord and to have the truth. I'd like to say that I'm so thankful for the gift of the Holy Ghost tonight. It's the best gift you'll ever receive. If you've never received it, it's the best gift you'll ever receive. I want to say that I'm thankful for my family, thankful for my wife. We, we've been, been through thick and thin together, married 32 years. God blessed me with her, blessed me with a great family. So thankful for that, for my mom. Brother Pete, Sister Nadine, they've been like my mom and dad. They, they took me in and treated me just like their own. This church, I'm so thankful for it. I'm thankful for Brother Gio and Sister Amanda. They're a godly man and woman, represent our church well. They, they love each and every one of us. I want to say I'm thankful to the Lord for my health. I went through some things this past year that I've never, ever had to go through in my life. I went through a spell where I was really, really sick with pancreatitis. I've, I've testified about it before. Um, the doctor did a test and told me that my pancreas wasn't formed right, Brother Dole. It was giving me a lot, a lot of problems. I had to have my gallbladder taken out, sent me to a specialist. I come up and got prayed for, and uh, they sent me to a specialist in St. Louis. They did another MRI. Uh, was fixing to prep me for surgery, to go back for surgery again, and the doctor come in the room. He said, there's nothing wrong with your pancreas. He said, Every, everything's great. I want to thank the Lord for that. I've not, I've not had any more trouble. I've not had any more trouble since then, Brother Jackie. God had healed me, and I'm, I'm claiming that, I'm believing that, not had any more issues since then. I want to thank the Lord for my children. God has blessed me with two fine children, a, a, a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law, and two beautiful, beautiful grandchildren that I just love, love dearly. But God is just, he's wonderful to us, church. He's so wonderful, Brother Pete. I could never thank him enough for all the things that he's done for me in my life, Sister Marie, and I, I love the Lord tonight. I am truly thankful for all his blessings. I love the Lord, and I thank him for his many blessings, his mercy, and his grace. And I'm thankful that I woke up this morning. You see, uh, there's a song, I believe, that the uh, Louisiana All-State Youth Choir used to sing that said, He woke me up this morning, He started me on my way, and in my heart I'll thank Him and praise Him for another day. And 
So many times I think we don't look at what God has truly done for us. My kids all woke up this morning. My wife woke up this morning. I see all of you woke up this morning. God has truly blessed us. We have clothes on our backs and food in our bellies. We have ways to get to church. And God, He looks way beyond our faults and way beyond the things that we have wrong in our life. And He says, I'm going to bless Him anyways. He might have a bad attitude, Brother G.L. He might, he might not be able to see what I'm doing for him, but I'm going to bless him anyways. Because one day he's going to realize how truly blessed he is. And I stand here before you tonight, and I thank God for all that he has done for me, all that he has done for my family, and I want to praise him and magnify him all of my days. I truly want to praise the Lord tonight and thank him. Thank him for the many blessings that I've gotten. Thank him for this church, for all these good saints here, here tonight. And all these prayers that went up for me for when I had cancer. And they got the lumps out of my chest. And then they said I didn't have cancer no more. And I thank God for the cancer. It's all gone. Praise God. I think when I was down taking chemo, I got plumbed down so far down that I didn't I didn't think I just wanted to live no more because when you get down real sick sometimes you don't want to you don't want to go on you know you want to just stop and but the wife my good wife here she she kept on pushing and pulling me pushed me on through it and I, I'm so thankful for that I'm thankful for my family that I have thankful for each and every one of you tonight thank you I don't like doing stuff like this. <laughs> I cry all the time. <laughs> so y'all just bear with me. Um, some of you may already know and some of you may not, but the other night I was at my in-law's house and I was eating like I normally do. And all of a sudden I got choked, like seriously choked. I couldn't catch my breath for nothing. I thought I was going to pass out. All I could do was tell Larry, like, help me. And I just thought I was done for. I just thought, like, seriously, I'm just, I don't want to go out with some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and so I cried, and I, like, prayed in my mind because I couldn't pray out loud. I said, God, please don't take me out like this. <laughs> I said, I cannot go out like this. And so as soon as I really started praying to him and saying, please, God, I don't want to die. I have kids. I threw the chicken up, y'all. <laughs> like, seriously. And Larry, he helped. I mean, he did the high look maneuver, and we got it out. And I'm so thankful that he had his hand on me because I have been a terrible person up until recently when I really gave everything to God. Because, I mean, I never, ever even really believed that there was really a God or anything, you know. And it just came, it just got me through so much. And I'm so thankful to be a part of this church and to have all y'all to lean on in my time of need. And I just love y'all. And I'm thankful. Who's next? <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I feel like it would really be a shame if I didn't thank God that I'm here tonight. <laughs> because I, <laughs> I'd been through so much and a lot of it was my own fault. But... <laughs> I still thought, you know, somebody's there for me, somebody's there for me, even at my dark times. And then God brought me Garrison, and he brought me to church. And 
since the moment I've been here, I've kind of like Richard, it's been like, I never want to leave. And I'm so thankful for everybody here because they just changed my life and touched me in every way. And I'm really thankful to be here tonight because I was sick this morning and I didn't think I was going to come. And when I got in my car to go to school, my gas tanks had only had 30 miles. I do that a lot. And my account's empty, so I couldn't go to the station at Risco. I'd have to drive all the way here first. And I thought, I'm just not going to make it tonight. I'll just have to wait until I get more money and get gas. Well, I thought, you know, 30 miles, I can get there tonight. Because I just kept feeling like, I, I have to go, I have to go. And when I got in my car... I had over a quarter of a tank of gas. And my gas light isn't even on now when I got here. And I know that's because God wanted me to come here tonight. And I haven't been here that long, but I don't plan on going anywhere else. And I'm really excited to see where God takes me in my life. Well, I'm thankful that I have two parents that love me, and I might have done some stuff that I'm not proud of, and even though I know God wasn't happy with me, but my parents were with me through everything, and I've got my mammal, and she's been with me ever since I've done I mean, I've done a bunch of stuff that I'm not proud of. And I I love my brothers. And they've been there for me, even though they pick on me a lot. And it really makes me want to punch them in their face. (laughs) But I still love them. And I'm just happy that I have a family that loves me. And I have a church family that loves me. And I'm thankful that God kept his hand over my grandma and grandpa. And left. (laughs) He kept his hand over him, and I'm just, (laughs) I'm just happy that even though sometimes I may not feel like I'm loved and that nobody cares, but I always have somebody. (laughs) Next. There's a lot of things I need to be thankful for tonight, but um, I've got good friends, family, this church, but the thing I'm most thankful for tonight is God's mercy and the many, many second chances that he's given to me. All right. I just uh, wanted to ask everybody how many believes in miracles. You're looking at one. It's been nearly two years. We'll be the 6th of January <laughs> that I got birthed. <laughs> I got called farther at the house, and I went back in the bathroom and put it out. And uh, when I got in the bathroom, when that water started hitting me, all my, them shirts just fell off of me. They done, bump, they done burnt my shirts up. And uh, then when I, they called it Jeremy, they called the ambulance, and... Uh, they are back me, packed me from out the house. And they was going to take me to St. Louis, and the weather was so bad they couldn't get in up there. So they took me to Memphis, to the burn center. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even know when I got down there. I didn't even know when I got there because I was down out on them treating to get me down there. And then I, after I got in the hospital... I didn't know anything from the time I went in until the two or three months when they brought me home. I didn't even know they'd brought me home to Matthews for two or three weeks after that. I didn't even know where I was at in three months. Uh, so I messed up, and they gave me some real strong antibiotics and different things down at the uh, strongest thing you have nearly, I guess. And uh, stuff down there, and I was on dialysis the three months of Memphis, and I didn't know that. And... Uh, 
I just thank the Lord for what he's done for me. And I guess you might say that he brought me through, brought me through the fire. And I appreciate all of the churches praying for me around here. And y'all and the church surrounding churches praying for me. And the people at work and everywhere. And I appreciate everything everybody's done. And uh, I just thank y'all. And thank God for bringing me through. Well, tonight has proved that I'm not the only one that cries every time they testify. (laughs) So Garrison can quit making fun of me. (laughs) But tonight I am so thankful for the hand of God um, over my life. It just seems like the past couple of years, even though I was raised with grandparents that have served God, oh, that is such a blessing. I'm so thankful for the heritage. My grandparents, both sets, have just been such wonderful examples of what a good Christian home and a good Christian marriage is supposed to be based upon. You know, when I turned my back on God so many times, and I was just such a hooligan, I was stubborn. I guess I just needed to get a taste of the world. And, you know, sin really will take you farther than you ever want to go. And and God just was always there beckoning me back. It would seem like when I would go places I knew I shouldn't be, I never could enjoy myself the way that it seemed like everybody else was because there was always something there that let me know. And that I didn't belong to the devil, that even when I was out in the world, I was still a child of God. I'm so thankful for that tonight. I'm so thankful for the hand of God in my life. And just the last couple of years, God has become so real to me. I'm so thankful that he didn't have to, you know, I knew he was real. He didn't have to prove himself to me, but he has. He has proved that he is my comforter, that he is my rock. He is the love of my life. He is just everything to me. And I'm so thankful for where he's brought me from. And just, I know that God's just doing a work in in me and my husband's life. I'm so thankful for my children and for everything that he's done for me. Well, I believe it's been eight years ago today that um, I walked down a a hallway in the federal building in Cape by myself. I had George on one side and Jerry on the other side. And mom and daddy weren't with me. I was by myself. That was the first of many days that I had to get a relationship with. It was just going to be me and God. And he started proving to me that day many, many, many things that he was going to get me through, and he did, and he, from that day, actually before that day, he, he gave me strength to, to get through and show me that he wasn't finished with me yet, that he did have a work for me to do, and that although what I did was wrong, that he was going to take something bad and make something good. And I was going to help other people. And I may not have known that then, but I'm beginning to see it now. And um, and I'm thankful that even through all the bad, that my kids have turned out the way they... Well, we're not finished with John Michael yet. <laughs> Lord, help us, Jesus. But Meredith, um, I'm very, very proud of her and, and her husband. I, I can't even begin to tell you how blessed that we are with him. Um, I mean, e- even if I had picked him out myself, I don't think I could have done that good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it just amazes me at, at how good God did. And, and God did it, obviously. And we were so blessed to have him for her. And, and I'm so thankful for where they are letting God lead them. They're such a blessing, and I'm thankful for that. And um, I'm thankful for our church and um, and the, our giving church. I'm, I'm so proud. And um, it's just such a, a good feeling to be a part of the church that everyone knows that, you know, that helps people. And um, 
That it is such a blessing. And when you do help people, it is, I mean, God blesses you. I mean, it, it is obvious that, you know, Brother GL preaches it. It's, it's the truth. I mean, it, it happens, you know. You don't do it so it happens. It's just, but it's the Bible. It, I mean, it works, you know. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for God keeping his hand on Daddy when he had his stroke, you know, and this year because I'm not ready to give my daddy up or my mama and I'm thankful that I still have them with me and um I don't I could sit here all night and praise God for everything I just go on and on and on and never never ever get done thanking him for everything he's done for me I I could you know I'm so thankful for everything he's done for me I'm so thankful tonight for my family. I'm thankful for my church family. I just, you know, I love this church. Um, I think in December we will have been coming here for three years, and it's uh, it's been a really fast three years. Um, I think a lot of people who don't, you know, that they don't go to a Pentecost church, I think they have the feeling <laughs> that we're just kind of boring and, you know, we just don't have fun. And, boy, I tell you, not this church. <laughs> but um, I'm just so thankful that, um, that the, you know, that the Lord kept his hand on me and that he never gave up on me. Um, I just, you know, I love this life, and I'm just really looking forward to see what the next couple of years brings. been a long time to been I've been going here probably close to 40 years so I feel better today than I did two or three weeks ago I feel real good today and I was going to say where could you go but to the Lord oh, seek in a refuge for your soul where could you go but to the Lord and it's the place to find it. And I thank him for what little bit I got. And thank him for my family. Thank him for my wife. <laughs> and poor kids. Poor wonderful kids. And thank him for everything he's done for me. I think I got this kind of by osmosis or something. I'm so thankful for everything the Lord's done for me. I could just stand here and I could I could talk longer than I think just about anybody because God's been so good to me and I'm so thankful for my children. I'm thankful for all four of them, but I'm especially thankful for Brother GL and and Mandy and Marcus and Kim. It's just Absolutely. Sometimes I sit back here and I just cry because I'm so thankful for what God has done. And, and I really didn't believe he'd do it, to be honest with you. I just really, Marcus, I just really wasn't expecting that. And the Lord did it. The Lord did it with, without me really even, I mean, I pray for him all the time, but I thought he'd be the last one. I knew my kids are going to be saved because the Lord promised me that. But I thought Marcus would be the last one and and, 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 but he wasn't. And I'm so thankful for what Jill and, and Mandy are doing in this church. But what I really wanted to testify about tonight is what Jill was telling you all about in church the other night about me going to work the other morning. I think it's been about three weeks ago. I was headed to carrying hands. And to be honest with you, I was on the phone to Maria. And um, we were just talking up a storm. And I got to the top of the overpass and where you turn right to go out on the interstate, it was right where I was at when I looked up and there was one of those great big tractors that has the four great big huge tires on it and it takes up the whole, the whole um, road, it, it, every bit of it. And I said, and I was right there at that turn off when I saw it. There wasn't any place to go. And I just, I just said, Maria, I'm, I'm having a wreck. 
I said, Marie, I'm having a wreck. I'm having a wreck. I'm having a wreck. And I didn't. And something just opened up. Now, y'all can believe this or not. Something just opened up, and I went beside of that thing. And there wasn't, I got on the other side of it, and I said, Maria, I don't know what just happened, but I'm on the other side of that tractor. And I was just, I just couldn't believe it. I just kept saying, can you believe it? I'm, I'm on the other side because I thought I was dead. I thought I was, I was fixing to die. I was going about 65 miles an hour, 62, 63 miles an hour. And there wasn't any way that I could have stopped. I just said, I'm having a wreck. I'm having a wreck. I mean, I just thought that was it. It was going to, I'm like, Sister Ashley, I was fixing to go meet the Lord. And it didn't even scare me, really. It was just like, I, I, I'm doing it right now. And I just, this, and it was a brown road. It was about the color of these chairs. It was a brown road, a different color road than what the highway is. And, and so I got to work and I thought, I bet that road's there. And I just, I, I'm just really imagining that that happened because that couldn't have happened. There's no way I got between there unless there was really a road there. So when I came home that afternoon, I got up on that, I got up on that overpass. There's no road of any kind. There's no sides to that thing at all. The Lord just opened me up a road and just put me past that tractor because I would have been dead. There's no doubt in my mind. And, and, it, it's 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 a miracle, and, and I couldn't hardly believe it myself because the next morning on the way to work, I looked for that road again, and that road is not there because that was the road the Lord made for me, and I'm so thankful that he kept his hand upon me. I didn't want my kids to be orphans. I, you know, I really didn't, and I seriously, that's what I think of. I don't want my kids to be orphans and not have anybody, and I'm just so thankful that the Lord spared me just one more time and kept his hand upon me, and I, I too, am so thankful for this church. It just... It just overwhelms me with what God is doing here, and I get to. I can never praise him for all the things that he's done for me, all the many, many things, prayers that he has answered down through the, the years. Uh, I started living for the Lord, I guess, and growing up here in the church, I kind of thought maybe I guess that I was a Christian all the time because we didn't do anything that people out in the world didn't do. We were raised uh, just like we were living for the Lord, even though we hadn't been repented and been baptized or anything. We still lived the same way the saints did and didn't go out and get into the world. So I guess I just thought that I was okay until the Lord began to convict me and real, I realized I had to have it for myself. What my parents had, I couldn't go to heaven just because I was. I came to church with them and I lived the same kind of a life that the, the children of God were living. I wasn't saved until I repented, until I was baptized, until I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I really didn't do that. I repented at 12 years old and was baptized and didn't receive the Holy Ghost then until I was 14, although I sought for the Holy Ghost every time I had an opportunity because I knew I had to have it in order to go to heaven. But I, since that time... I've never had a desire to do anything but live for the Lord. I've never had a desire to be out in the world and do the things of the world. I love the church. I loved singing in the church. I loved doing all the things that we did in the church. It was my life. It's always been my life. I love the Lord. He's been a wonderful Savior. I could never praise him for all the things that he's done. I've been away from home for short periods of time, not any long, long period of time. But I was away from home for a while in a place where there was no Pentecostal church. And if you don't think that you really, 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 really need to be in the house of the Lord, you need to be somewhere where you can't be in the house of the Lord, where the truth is taught and where they worship the Lord like we do. Because I went to church. I couldn't stay home. I went to another denominational church. And I enjoyed their singing and I enjoyed the things that we did. But there was not that worship. So when I'd get down beside my bed at home, in my room where I was staying, I would just cry and pray just like I did at home until I prayed through. I had to pray through, and I made sure that I still fasted my one day a week because I did not want to lose my experience with the Lord from not being able to be in the house of the Lord. And I didn't stay there very long because I just was not ever happy to not be where I could worship the Lord. I love him, 
and he is my life. He's everything that I've ever wanted. I love my family. I love my husband. The Lord gave me the best husband in the whole world. Y'all might think you got one, but you didn't. I got him. Uh, the Lord just uh, brought him to me, and, and I'm so thankful for the life that we've enjoyed together. And he's always put the church first and been willing to live, you know, wanting to live for the Lord too because I could have never been happy with somebody that didn't because that has always been my life. I love the Lord, and I always want to do what he wants me to do. I love the Lord tonight. He's Hi, how are you doing, son? You did? Well, oh my goodness. I love the Lord tonight. He, uh, he's been nothing but good to me my whole life. Uh, appreciate Brother Doyle and Sister Mary. We've had a lot, a lot of good times together. It's good to see them again. I appreciate my family, all my family. My kids and grandkids and great grandkids, the Lord has given us. And uh, I got a request tonight. I'm going to make it known before I go any further. I want Sister Amanda to sing that song again before we go home tonight. Because that's one thing that's got me through. Brother Billy, my walk with God is holding on. He's just got to keep holding on. Sometimes the road gets a little rocky, but we just got to keep holding on. That song, I don't know if she sang that in Sunday night, and I'm telling you what, it, it done something to me. It was it's a beautiful song. I want you to listen to the words of it when she sings it again. I hope Brother Jill let her sing it before we go home tonight, because I want to hear it one more time. And that's the secret to living for God is just keep holding on. Put him first. If I had any advice to anybody tonight, I come from a, my father was an alcoholic, and it's not easy living for the Lord. I used to get so aggravated. Sister Nady and I were talking about it today. I had an old 49 Ford truck, and I would painted it with a brush. It didn't look too good up close, Brother Jackie, but from a distance, that thing looked real good. It was red. I had her name put on one side of the door and wrote mine on the other side. <laughs> we used to do that a long time ago. Yes, sir. My dad sometimes would get it, and he parked it some places that I didn't approve of. I've, we rode down to Marston one time, the old Hollywood Court. I was looking for my truck, and it was sitting there at Hollywood Court with Pete on one side and Nadine on the other. <laughs> it's embarrassing, very embarrassing. I got, I'd get on to him about it, but there wasn't nothing I could do about it, Brother David. But I appreciate my wife, and I appreciate my kids, and like I say, my, my son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. God's just been so good to me, I couldn't ask for anything more. Only other thing I want is I want to see him face-to-face, -face, Brother Johnny. And I'm going to do my best, Brother Johnny, to meet him one of these days. And I know if I stay true to him, Brother Terry, I'm going to make it. I'm just going to keep holding on until I make it to that rope. Lord bless you. I love God tonight, and I'm so thankful for everything he's done for me. I thank him for my family, my husband. I'm so thankful for this church, as many of y'all have said. I was just sitting today thinking about this wonderful church and all of you precious, precious people and how thankful that I am for each and every one of you all. I could, if I could just sit and write a letter to all of you all, my heart's so full of all the wonderful things that I would love to say to you of how much that you mean to me. Each one of you holds such a special place in my heart. You've, you just have no idea how much you mean to me. But if, I want to thank God for his faithfulness. He's been so very faithful to me. And I want to thank him for his long suffering, 
for his patience with me. I've lived for God for a mighty long time, but I've not always been as faithful to him as I should have been, but he's been so very faithful to me. It's my prayer and my desire that I can be as he wants me to be and that I can once again become what I once was for him. My desire is to become something that he can mold me and make me to be a vessel of honor, that I can be used of him in a way to bring glory and honor to his kingdom. My desire is to work for him, to bring glory into him because he's worthy of everything that we could ever bring into him. Our God is worthy of all praise, and my desire is to to bring that into him. I love God. I could never, ever, ever give back to him what he's given to me, and I love the Lord tonight. I love the Lord tonight, and I'm so thankful to be a part of the best church there is and have the best pastor and his wife there is and have been raised up with so much stability with Brother McKinney. We have heard so much of the Word of God, and the Word of God will keep you and the foundation that we've had. And it really wasn't too hard for me to believe Judy because I was on the phone with her that whole time, and I've seen the dead raised, you know. You know, I've seen the dead rise west of another road, you know. And I was on the phone with her, and I also remember, I don't know, about 26 years ago, Brother Plunk stood in between Sister McKinney and I in the old church, and he was talking about his car going in between two semis up on his side. And he said, I just came down, and I was fine. So when she was telling me, just like she said, I was just like, well, I've heard this before, you know. It's just like the Lord. It is just like the Lord. This is the best life there is. I could never praise him enough. I really wasn't living until I received the Holy Ghost. Because you're really not living until you have. You have not lived until you've received the Holy Ghost. It's the best life there is. I love his ways. I I know I've been corrected a million times because I'm not ever going to be. It doesn't come natural to me to be as good as Sister Nadine. (laughs) It doesn't, and my heart's done more work than that. Sister Betty Jo's time here goes by fast because she's never still. I'm so excited when they say they're going to do something because if they say they're going to do something, you can blink and it's going to be done and it's going to be beautiful. And they, Brother Ray and Sister Betty Jo have been such a blessing. Everyone here is a blessing. I love my church family. Can I say that again? I love my church family. I love this life. I, I... it, there is nothing to compare this side of heaven to what we have here. I could never praise him enough. Somebody else want to? Did you want your, or Terry just doing that to you? Oh. <laughs> I'm very thankful for the Holy Ghost. Y'all. When I found out Billy was sick, a part of me died. The thought of him dying just broke my heart. And I called Judy, and I said, I'm not even going to be effective. I can't even pray. I can't pray. All I can do is cry. I can't even pray. He's going to die, and he's going to die lost, and it's going to be my fault because all I can do is cry. That's all I can do is cry. And so when Brother Flanagan was here, and he was talking about praising so I was on my way to work the next day in my PD party and crying and I just I said you know what then that's what I'm going to do and I started saying thank you God for the healing that's coming and thank you God for the salvation that's coming and I just started saying that over and over and over again and it's like the Lord spoke to me and he said cancer is not a death sentence it is a disease and I can fix it And immediately, I had peace. And I was fine. We went to the doctor, and I just knew in my heart that it was going to be fine. I called my mama, tried to rest her, and, of course, that didn't work. She cries every day. And then I took Billy Friday to the doctor, and the doctor came in, and I I knew it was, I just, I thought, oh, my Lord, I called Marcus. I said, they're going to give me these results, and they're going to be bad. 
And I'm telling you, that doctor walked in there and said, I've got good news. You've got cancer and I can fix it. And I thought, praise the Lord, he's got cancer and we can fix it. I called, I called everybody. I was so excited that he had cancer, but we were going to fix it. And then Saturday night he got sick and they took him to the hospital. So Sunday morning I come in and I'm like, Kim, you're stupid. You know, he's cancer, he's dying. And they done a CAT scan and he's got 12 masses and they're everywhere and he's going to die. And then my mama said, the cancer doctor up there come in and say, well, Mr. Ward, you've got cancer, but we're going to fix it. I'm just so thankful for that. It's going to be a long road, but I know he's going to be healed and I know they're going to be saved. And I just want to thank God for that. Um, I'm thankful to be alive, Brother Bobby. I'm a miracle too. You know, I'm, I'm walking and talking right now. I shouldn't be. By all rights, I should be dead somewhere. And I'll tell you why, but it's, it's not PG-13. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not pretty. It's ugly. That's why I'm thankful for repentance. I'm thankful for God that not only forgives, but he forgets. I knew it. I knew he was going to do that. (laughs) I'm thankful for repentance as well. I'm thankful for those good roads, but I'm thankful for those bad roads. Those big old detours that we took. But they always led us straight back to where we're supposed to be. I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for a whole lot of things. Um, I'm thankful for my husband and my children, of course. Um, I'm thankful for my mom and dad. Um, um, Me and my brother and sisters have something that a whole lot of people don't have, and that's parents that have been together that long. Um, We've had good health, all of us. Um, There's a lot of families that have a lot of tragedies and uh, misfortune in my family has not had um we've had deaths I mean that's just part of life um but we've gotten through it and it's not ever been anything that we couldn't we couldn't get through but um I, I do I, I thank the Lord for um my children's health we've seen so many other I mean you see it on Facebook all the time parents with their children that have been diagnosed with cancer or um, just all kinds, you know, heart disease, you know, little babies, newborn babies having open heart surgery and things that just shouldn't be. And my kids have always been healthy. I mean, I guess probably the worst thing we've ever had is trip had asthma and we dealt with that. And um, so God has been so good to me and I could never thank him enough. I know I saw Miss Francis wanted to a while ago. You still want to? You still want to testify? Well, you just go right ahead. That'll be fine. You're my best friend. You can do whatever you want to. I'm thankful for all of this family of mine. And I'm thankful for the church and my sister-in-law and my nieces and all. But the thing of it, I miss my brother, but I hope he he rests in peace. And I may have faced at the fact that my brother is gone. But I do miss him. And I love him, but I thank him for my sister in law for standing by me and my niece Connie and and Billy and Michelle, and I, I'm thankful for all of the family. Well, 
Well, I, I'm going to tell you that, uh, and there may be some more that would like to testify. Uh, you need to grab the microphone quicker. Uh, this is one of my favorite services of the whole year. Uh, we don't necessarily have to be done. Kids are out of school. Uh, tasters ain't closed yet. Um, but uh, I love this. I love this. I love it. Uh, I got me some notes. <laughs> 